All right, we're back at the piano. You had established your mouthpiece A. You've gone back to the horn and worked on some descending octave slurs. Now you're going to work on developing the flexibility with only the mouthpiece. So get yourself back to your A. You may have lost it a little bit. It doesn't hurt to check. I like, for my students, I like them to try to get to the point that they can play the mouthpiece A before they verify it on the keyboard. So they're developing a physical sensation of this is what my home tongue position should feel like. That's kind of what we call it. It's a home-based tongue position to start with. So let's see how I do here. Okay, I wasn't spot on with my pitch, but I was pretty darn close. Okay, so now what we're going to do to work on the flexibility is we are going to gradually play descending intervals, always coming back to A. So we start with our A, we play a half step down to A flat, we come back again. Let me try. Okay, what am I doing? In order to develop that flexibility, we have to check in with several things. If you can whistle, and there are different ways that people whistle, if you can whistle blowing out, this should translate in a very similar way. The way that you change pitches when you are whistling out is you are changing, your tongue starts perhaps in this ramp position, and you hadn't even realized that, and it will gradually be changing in the middle and in the front, and you'll also be changing a little bit. You'll feel some musculature around here that might all change slightly as you change pitches. And I find that that is very, very similar to changing pitches on the mouthpiece, so that's one idea for you. Another thing that you have to start figuring out is that it's like you're holding a certain part of your pitch, whatever pitch it is, you're holding that up and back further in that vocal tract area than you realize. And one way you can figure out where that is is if you can gargle. So get yourself something to drink. I would recommend water, carbonated beverage, hot coffee, not a good idea. I've got some water right here. Okay, get yourself something to drink, give it a try. Come back when you're done. All right, now that you've gargled, you feel that place up and back further. It's in your throat, it's kind of on the upper side. To me, it feels like it's on the upper side, <laughs> up there on the nose side of my throat. That place back there, I want to feel like when I'm playing on just the mouthpiece, that some part of the pitch I am playing is holding back there, and then as I get lower, the pitches stretch further forward in my mouth. I'm gonna try a major second here, A down to G. I want the pitch that I'm playing, no matter what it is, I want there to be a body to it. I don't want it to get really too thin or too unstable. I want there to be, we, we will often refer to that as a focus in my sound. And I think the way I'm doing that is I'm feeling that pitch being held up and back in that gargle place. That could help you. Other things that I'm doing as I go, I'm making sure that I'm not blowing hard. If I'm blowing, it's just not going to work out. I need to exhale. I might need to increase my the activity of my shh muscles just a little bit more. I do feel like I'm, I, I sometimes think of that as feeling like I am leaning with those muscles a little bit more. I'm leaning into the lower pitch as I go. So I'm not backing off on the shh muscle activity. I also feel, kind of like what I was talking about with whistling, I feel like my muscles on the sides of my mouth, my embouchure muscles here, I feel like I am 
engaging a little stronger into the sides of the mouthpiece as I go. Last but not least, I feel like the lower I go, if I think about the middle of my bottom lip as being the bottom point of a V, I'm moving my V further down the reed. And we're not talking a very far distance. It doesn't go very much further than the starting point. But the musculature, the muscle activity, the energy flow is going that way into the reed the lower I go. And if you think about it for a moment, when we think about how the reed and mouthpiece have to work together and we need the reed to vibrate a lot, if we start pinching harder just straight up into the reed this way, we've got the pinch going this way, we will not develop the flexibility. We'll be choking the reed. So if, if I can think about a little bit of energy going further down the reed, it's putting the pressure a little further down into the stronger part of the reed that can handle the pressure, okay? So all of these little tricks or ideas might help you start being able to play lower pitches. Our goal is to work our way down the keyboard. Good practical flexibility gets us down the interval of a perfect fifth from A down to D. That's what we're going for. So, we left off with a major second. Let's go for a minor third, down to F sharp. Keep going. I'm going down for a fourth. And now, a lovely tritone, down to E flat. And last but not least, our fifth, down to D. So that flexibility that I'm working on with the mouthpiece should help me with just about everything else. If you can do more than a perfect fifth, that's fantastic. You can compete with members of your saxophone section. How low can you go? It's like the limbo. <laughs> um, but really, good essential flexibility is a fifth. That's what you're going for on that.